all right good morning so uh, today we are going to see the geometry of uh, quantum states the qubit in particular now uh, let's look at uh, classical bits well classical bits are binary 0 1 uh, and uh, the physical implementation would be can be a stored charge in a capacitor Uh, quantum bits well essentially it's a 2d vector space that is a column vector and uh, I can have a orthonormal basis so this is a Hilbert space mind you normal basis uh, where by convention I have and this guy this is also called as the computational basis or the standard basis Uh, so what are the examples of this uh, spin half where the up spin is the zero and the down spin is one uh, it can also be so the example depends upon the degree of freedom we are considering whether it's a spin degree of freedom of an electron or a, let's say a photon polarization where your right circular light could be zero and one could be your left circular light a two-level atom where your zero could be the excited state and uh, one would be your the ground state so how, how to visualize a qubit uh, well one way to visualize a qubit is uh, let's say consider an arbitrary state vector in a two-dimensional Hilbert space so I have this guy and I let's consider normalized vector so I have a normalization condition as well so I have uh, three independent parameters that's the surface of so immediately when I consider three independent parameters say this was a complex number this was a complex number each of them are two degrees two degrees but they are tied by a relation so in some sense I have three independent parameters and this reminds me the surface of a sphere uh, I'll come to actually this reminds me of the entire sphere but uh, let's see uh, what what do I mean by this so let me represent the qubit as cosine theta by 2 0 
plus e iota phi sine theta by 2 1 mind you the uh, overall phase doesn't really matter so I could just might as well instead of these two things so this qubit is equivalent to something with an overall phase of I don't know phi 2 So an overall phase in front of a qubit doesn't really matter, but the relative phase between the 0 and the 1 is going to matter as we shall see. So by convention I pick uh, theta to have a range between 0 and pi and uh, the phi, the phase is ranging from 0 to 2 pi. So that demands, defines me of uh, I have two parameters now theta and phi this is actually theta and uh, that defines for me the surface of a sphere over here I have the x-axis I have the y-axis and I have the z-axis so this is my zero where I have uh, the theta and phi now are the polar angle and the azimuthal angle. So theta is uh, zero which is also easy or it's my spin up or it's my representation for the right circular elements, polarized light. The orthogonal state mind you is 1 1 and 0 are the orthonormal basis but on this block sphere the sphere is called the block sphere so orthogonal states are geodesics on the block sphere and this is minus ez or uh, in other words it's the downspin or it's going to be represented by the right left polar circular polarized right. Uh, in general any state on the surface of the sphere as we have already seen is going to be cosine theta by 2 0 plus e to the power of i phi sine theta by 2 1. unit vector in the direction n that's how I represent it by n so this is going to be in general some let me label it as n this state over here and uh, as you can see this guy is going to be something diametrically opposite to it this is going to be minus n or this guy is going to be sine theta by 2 0 minus over here uh, mind you in this convention I have n to be orthogonal to minus n that's just a way of representation it's not the minus sign it's the label uh, so that's going to be zero they are orthogonal states uh, so that's how I represent all the points on the sphere surface of the sphere it represents the state of a qubit so as you can already see unlike the classical bit which was either a zero or a one a qubit has infinite possibilities all points on the surface of the sphere uh, 
okay so uh, this is called the block sphere for light it is called something called as the poincare sphere it's the same thing for the state of the light so once again i have the axis and uh, well let me just label other states on this qubit also so if this is ey this guy was uh, minus ey which was if you do the math EX. So, yeah, uh, EX would be okay. So, this is the circularly polarized life and uh, what we have here is uh, the orthogonal state to it is the left circularly polarized light on the sphere it's 0 0 minus 1 uh, in what was the x-axis you have minus 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, which is going to be linear polarization, horizontal linear polarization. And this was a vertical linear polarization. So, for example, the block vector typically is the degree of freedom is the spin half particle. This is the up spin. This was the down spin. For a photon polarization degrees of freedom, this is the left circular polarized, right circular polarized, vertical polarized, horizontal polarized. And of course, the y axis would correspond to the vector 0, 1, 0 on the sphere, which is uh, 45 degrees linear polarization. This would be 0, minus 1, 0. And uh, these three guys, S1, S2, S3, the three components I'm talking about, this is called as a Stokes vector. And uh, the three components here, or any N over here, this is called as a block vector, generically the block vector. So these are just definitions, just a way of representation of uh, states. Certainly each of these directions also defines the direction of the projector. So I can have a projector in the end direction and uh, that's going to be essentially if you do the math uh, it's going to be cosine squared theta by 2. I'm just going to expand my generic state in the end direction. This guy. And uh, I'm going to obtain when I evaluate the outer products.
that's going to be this guy. So this is a short form of writing a projector uh, which is going to be where I mean n dot sigma. Sigma are the poly matrices. Uh, so this is a shorthand notation of writing a projector uh, in this particular form that's just evaluated by the outer product here. Uh, you know expanding this guy. Uh, this is just a math. There's no deep concepts out here. So I'll just say what do I mean? I'm just expressing when I express these guys 0, 0, 1, 1 in the standard 0, 1, 1, 0 computational basis. I express that in terms of the poly matrices where uh, my poly matrices are sigma x which is uh, also called as sigma 1 or also called as the x operator which is nothing but this guy. And in the matrix representation, it's this guy. Sigma y is this guy. And sigma z is this guy okay so what are the proper properties of these poly matrices so essentially uh, I request you guys to play around with poly matrices and outer products in the block sphere just to get a feel of uh, these things. There's also going to be some homework problems regarding that. So properties of poly matrices are going to be, uh, well, they are Hermitian. So you can, of course, verify them. They are Hermitian as well as unitary. Also, so when they are Hermitian as well as unitary, this implies that the square of them is identity. The product of two poly matrices is this is the asymmetric symbol which essentially means well you start with 1 2 3 that's 1 and uh, essentially this is equals to Just uh, if they are in the cyclic order or this represents a permutation uh, of these guys uh, then you get a minus sign and any two indices just uh, check the definition of this guy on Wikipedia if you want clarification and uh, if any two indices are equal this is called as the Levy cavita symbol if any two indices are equal okay so uh, this essentially is uh, 
you know some of the properties of uh, poly matrices which one should keep in mind uh, so this is p is called also as the uh, parity of permutation uh, is the number of pairwise number of pairwise interchanges of indices necessary this is necessary to unscramble into the original order of psi 1 to 3. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? Well, that just means that sigma 1, sigma 2 would come out to be iota sigma 3. Remember this expression. This is the Kronecker delta function. sigma 2 sigma 1 sigma 1 sigma 3 equals to minus iota sigma 2 minus sigma 3 sigma 1 and uh, sigma 2 sigma 3 equals to iota sigma 1 equals to minus sigma 3 sigma 2 And essentially, the idea is that the all products of poly matrices can be reduced to a single matrix. And this is the usual commutation relation. This guy. So, for example, sigma 1, sigma 2 is going to give us and so on and so forth. Sigma 3, sigma 1 is going to give us uh, these guys are traceless. Trace of uh, sigma x plus n y sigma y plus n z sigma z. Uh, well, they are orthogonal. So, remember the trace inner product we can define. This is the orthogonality relation uh, operators identity sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 they form a basis for a four dimensional operator space So that any operator can be written as this guy. So which also means where I have the same convention A sigma 
is just uh, ax sigma x plus ay sigma y plus az sigma z. So sigma is essentially called as a Pauli vector with three components. It's a vector where the entrances, the entries in the row are the matrices. Uh, so in that sense, let's say I could represent any operator A as some coefficient multiplied by the identity matrix and components of your usual ordinary vector ax, ay, az multiplied by the poly vector. So my projector is nothing but you can work this out over here and. Uh, There's some more properties of the projector where I have this guy as this is the same representation as the outer product remember and uh, I also know that uh, these projectors in opposite directions are going to form a complete set of orthogonal vectors which is going to be the identity so I can combine one and two to show that uh, this guy is equals to which is nothing but the eigen decomposition remember the spectral decomposition this is the eigen decomposition of this guy. In other words, n is an eigenvector with an eigenvalue 1. If A is Hermitian, uh, well, one can define a unit vector here now. N is not an operator, it's a unit vector, and with that regard, I can regard the operator A in terms of the unit vector it's the magnitude of the vector times this guy. So in other words in this way the eigen decomposition of A is going to be These are the eigenvectors and these are the eigenvalues. Ok, 
Okay, so uh, some more properties. Maybe this was the eighth property. If I exponentiate this iota n sigma gamma, that is nothing but this guy. So, what about my observables? Well, if the system is in the state, let's say, in a state n, and uh, let's say there is a measurement of this observable. Well, the eigen decomposition of this observable is nothing but this guy. So, uh, any direction you measure, either you are going to get a plus one eigenvalue or a minus one eigenvalue and the probability So, the probability, let's say, of plus 1, that is getting this guy, is just the inner product squared, which is, so, I have a state on the block sphere in the n direction. I am making a measurement on this projector. The probability I am getting the state M with an eigenvalue of 1 is just going to be related to the dot product of these two vectors and of course I am going to get a minus 1 with probability Okay, now let me consider this particular operator. Let's say I have an operator the Hermitian operator. Once again I define the unit vector n. Now I have A unitary matrix, I can write it down as this guy. Uh, which gives me what? When I expand it, it just gives me because uh, I commutes with this guy, so I can just expand it as And uh, I get so this is also known as the rotation operator, what this essentially means is that uh, this unitary in fact, you can notice that uh, I in general write the unitary matrix as an exponential of I times the Hermitian operator and my Hermitian operator was this guy. I plugged in the value. So, the bottom line is I am representing 
any particular unitary matrix as an exponential of a Hermitian operator which can be viewed as a, a rotation a rotation along the axis n by an angle of theta so u can be viewed as rotating the vector on the block sphere by theta so I have some vector my initial vector and I'm rotating let's say it about the x-axis this is going to rotate by an angle given by theta and that operation is going to be given by a unitary matrix and in fact I can route down any unitary matrix over this two-dimensional vector as a rotation about some axis that's what we've shown it over here uh, there was nothing in particular about A's but for the fact that it's Hermitian and I can write down any unitary matrix as E of iota times H where H is a Hermitian matrix so generically any U can be construed as a rotation by an angle of theta uh, about an axis in the direction N so once again uh, we use our identity one of the results this was I should use it to be equal cosine gamma plus iota n sigma sine gamma and uh, in general using that it's going to be I'm just plugging this guy over here now gamma is theta by 2 that's going to give me in fact you can multiply this guy uh, to any vector and the vector you are going to get is a vector which is going to be rotated on the block sphere the rotated rotated I call it theta by angle theta about axis given by n so it's nice to see the action of unitary operators on the block sphere the rotations of these vectors the vectors themselves to be points on the space the projectors themselves also to be geodesics points on the space and in general the properties of the poly matrices and so on and so forth uh, so i'll give you some uh, uh, homework problems uh, so that uh, uh, all this is more concrete in your head but essentially we'll be using this uh, uh, geometry a lot and essentially whenever someone talks to you about a qubit a quantum bit this block sphere where all states on the surface of the sphere are permissible uh, values of a qubit a qubit has infinite number of possibilities as you can already see unlike a classical bit so we'll continue uh, more properties in the next lecture and we'll start with our simple quantum algorithms now slowly we have all the pieces uh, but once again, the request is to try and practice this yourself. It's going to be more fun. Thank you.